We're living in an interesting era of gaming where famous developers are exploring new forms of game funding, sometimes to great success. After a week of teasing, Koji Igarashi pitched Bloodstain through Kickstarter and got funded within an hour. Recently, former Rare developers unveiled Ukulele and that too got funded in a record amount of time. And naturally, Keiji Inafune received a staggering amount of cash to help develop Mighty No. 9. These developers have been burned by the current atmosphere of publishers in the market, which makes their logic for exploring crowdfunding reasonable. However, I can't help but feel concerned about a recent trend in kickstarting that has been growing much more over the years, the romanticizing of game development. Kickstarter has always been a touch-and-go form of funding projects. Patrons have to spend both their trust and their cash on an idea that doesn't exist yet. However, with the current atmosphere of the gaming industry and cutthroat publishers, fans have been yearning for long-awaited ideas and are more than willing to throw whatever it takes to get their dreams funded. The gaming community has a lot of faith that they're willing to put into whatever sounds like a good idea, which has led to some polarizing results. We've seen a lot of ideas that would have died off otherwise manage to see the light of day, but we've also begun to see the ugly side of funding with dissatisfied contributors and unfinished games. A lot of these trends can be traced to a reliance of the developer's history and personality, alongside a consumer's overwhelming faith in their favorite developer. It makes sense for consumers to put faith in a developer with past experience. With pedigrees like the creators of Mega Man and Castlevania, naturally their history evokes an air of confidence with backers. However, we fail to recall the backing that these developers had. Steady paychecks, a modern working environment, extra manpower, oversight on a project, among other things. Nowadays, game development has been romanticized in a way that demonizes publishers, but despite certain hang-ups, these publishers still fronted many key tools for game development. The funding from Kickstarter is also a drop in the bucket compared to what game development normally takes. Bloodstained is a perfect example of this since the Kickstarter goal was a small fraction of what was needed to actually develop the game, the rest being fronted by other publishers. Now that many famous developers are going on their own, they need to sell an idea based on merit and experience alone. With the recent uprising of games getting funded on Kickstarter, we're seeing this concept a lot more when it comes to selling an idea. This is going to seem silly for a bit, but just humor me. <clears throat> Imagine, if you will, your favorite developer. He wants to make a new game concept, but he can't get funding through traditional methods. That's why he needs your help. Yes, you, the fans! Your developer has a history of making fun and engaging games, and now he needs your help in order to make his next idea a reality. We only have concepts and design documents now, but with proper funding from you, we can make this dream a reality. Sound familiar? This is the formula for all Kickstarter trailers with the most attention, and in a way it's perfectly reasonable. Kickstarter is a system heavily based on faith, and appealing to a developer's past history is a great way to ease concerns about backing a project. Oftentimes these trailers depict the developers as a heroic figure in dark times, trying to once again bring joy and splendor to the people they love. Funding a game on Kickstarter nowadays requires confidence in the developer, so naturally it's best to portray him in a positive light. While history and experience are great ways to instill confidence in a backer, we must also consider the nostalgia factor born of this ideal. Many of these great Kickstarters have been born from the development team of a legendary game made so long ago, and consumers tend to hang on to this idea when they first hear the project announcement. A good example of this is Keiji Inafune. He made the groundbreaking Mega Man series and helped develop many great games. However, what many people don't know is that his last big contribution was with Mega Man X5, and Inafune was hoping to stop developing for the series after that game. From X5, Inafune hasn't been active in the development process of a Mega Man game, oftentimes being listed as a producer or merely as special thanks. Igarashi has a similar background as well. Despite Symphony of the Night being his critical success, it's also the last game he actively had a hand in developing. While these godfathers of gaming are the names of legends, they have also had very little experience with designing modern games. Many facets of game design have aged well, and a new era of consumers may find their ideals antiquated or just outright dumb. Sure, these developers have history and personality on their side, but they've also been out of the development scene for a long time. Being so dependent on personality, we as consumers seem to have lost sight on what we should look for in a Kickstarter campaign. One big thing many backers fail to realize is that the images and gameplay shown in a Kickstarter are merely concepts. Backers oftentimes get so caught up in the hype that they don't realize how wildly a game can change across development. A big example of this is Double Fine's recent adventure game campaign that resulted in Broken Age, a Kickstarter that pulled $3.3 million from crowdfunding yet resulted in many questionable actions from the developers and many unsatisfied customers. 
The campaign was heavily dependent on Tim Schafer's past success with titles such as Grim Fandango and Day of the Tentacle. Yet there were no game concepts shown initially, and the first actual idea born from this was the famous Lumberjack Walk. Mighty No. 9 has also had a similar turn of events, where the alpha build released a few months after funding looked nothing like the screen shown in the Kickstarter, and as a result it effectively shattered backer confidence. Consumers often get too absorbed in the hype of a new project that they forget that they are buying into a concept, and concepts change over time. Another thing to note is the change in overall manpower in a Kickstarter team. Game development is not an easy thing, especially so without the extra resources big-name publishers bring to the table. Barring poor budgeting decisions, indie development basically means these developers will be working with limited manpower and hardware. The average cost for a team of game developers is no small thing either. Oftentimes the salary for programmers and designers can stack up well beyond what a Kickstarter campaign can accrue. The developers of Shovel Knight had to deal with this problem, having to go several months at the end of development without pay just to release the game as a passion project. This is the kind of stress most people are unaware of when it comes to game development, and it's typically alleviated from having the help of a big publisher. It's also something that can't be easily remedied by dropping voice acting or reducing the budget on advertising either. While some developers are very dissatisfied with the current atmosphere of gaming development, this new frontier of funding a game may be riskier than initially anticipated. In an ironic bit of wordplay, however, this rose-tinted mentality drawn from Kickstarter has begun to show how fanatical some fanbases can get. While developers tend to make mistakes, in the end they just want to make a game, and the best way to get backing is to appeal to fans. With fan funding, however, consumers are starting to feel the sting of becoming a sort of publisher as well. Many consumers that kickstart a game are oftentimes blinded by the allure of contributing to a project, and the final product oftentimes doesn't live up to the hype generated over time. Mighty No. 9 has been struggling with this lately. As mentioned before, the alpha footage doesn't meet the standards set by the Kickstarter campaign. And despite being an alpha build, many backers have been openly expressing their disappointment in the product. This too is understandable since it's a new kind of buyer's remorse that consumers are unfamiliar with. Typically, fans back these kinds of projects because they earnestly believe in the developer and wish to see something new and interesting come to light. This kind of fanaticism can cut both ways, though. While fans are more than willing to help start a project, they are also more than willing to fly off the handle when they feel a project is not meeting their expectations. It takes a lot of courage to properly fund a game, and similarly, it's why publishers are so stern towards game developers. Now that fans are becoming the investors, the feedback becomes much more volatile as well. Each backer's impression of what the game should be can vary wildly, and with anywhere between hundreds to tens of thousands of investors, the resulting feedback can overwhelm anyone. Fans can be a godsend and a nightmare for developers to deal with, and now that more Kickstarter games are being completed, we're beginning to see that concept in full force. In this era of homogenized game development and outrageous publisher stunts, it's nice to believe that indie game development and Kickstarter can help subvert these issues. However, the reality isn't so cut and dry. We've begun to see issues arise from this new form of funding, and consumers are starting to feel the sting as a result. The romanticized ideal of game development makes Kickstarter funding look nice, but the support gained from Kickstarter is oftentimes not enough to subvert the limitations from indie development. I'm not saying give up all hope on Kickstarter, however, but rather be practical about your expectations. Kickstarter is a system built up on faith and hype, but game development is dynamic and may not fit expectations. Funding a game is fine, but just remember you're funding a concept, and concepts change over time. Perhaps one day game development will be as poetic as all the Kickstarter trailers describe, but for now the grim reality is something that we must come to terms with. <laughs>